Hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube video. This is the next lineup in my um, tutorial videos on how to do exam questions. You probably, if you're watching this video at this stage, already see my previous four videos I've done at GCSE level on how to answer specific AQA GCSE history questions, looking at a Germany 4 marker, a Cold War 12 marker, a Norman 8 marker, and a Medicine 16 marker. So you've done it. It's now, you know, you've done your GCSEs, it's now on to A levels. And I'll be going through a trilogy of the three type of exam questions you will need to answer in your A-level history course. I won't be covering any of the coursework because that's coursework and that's not the aim of the video and it's very much more self-reliant. If you're looking at the coursework I recommend simply going onto the AQA web, uh, a, well any exam board website specific for OCR. Go on to that. I kind of said a line there before I wanted to say it but it doesn't really matter. Uh, yes, as I hinted towards there, this will be um, how to answer the Russia 1894 to 1941 OTR A-level 10 marker. All of it is in the series beyond the OCR exam board because that's my exam board. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing for my A-levels. However, I've heard OCR exam technique is very similar to AQA. So if you're an AQA student history, this will probably also be quite relevant to you in terms of the exam structure. So yeah, how to answer an OCR A-level history Russia exam question. Unit Y219, the non-British period study and it is worth 15% of your A-level to make sure you get this spot on. It's a one hour paper. So the 10 marker I've chosen to do today, and I got my AI to mark it for me actually on Snapchat, uh, so I could give you a prompt answer, is this. It's based on the third section of the Russian course, of the three sections of course, Life on the Tsar Nicholas II, 1917 period, uh, Civil War and Lenin and Lord of Star. And this is the Civil War and Lenin, and this is the 10 marker, as you can see here, it's I'll write down the page, I'll go through it in a minute. It's which of the following had more of an impact of an impact on Bolshevik victory um, in the Russian Civil War. You've got a choice between propaganda and strategy leadership, 10 marks. So straight away, you know, straight away, you need to talk about both of these factors and you need to decide which one you think is more relevant. So. First of all, the structure for this question, it's quite simple. It's pretty much as I think you probably guess at this stage, but it doesn't really matter. You start off with not a straight line. I'm trying to section this off. Your intro, paragraph one, paragraph two, and your conclusion. That's how you structure this. So in your first paragraph, make sure you make your main line of argument clear in fact you should probably even do that in the conclusion but the point i'm trying to make here is in your first paragraph make that the one you think is more important so for example i chose strategy and leadership as my reason being more important as you'll see in a minute so i put that in the first paragraph in the second paragraph i use propaganda now of course there are quite a lot of reasons why the bolsheviks won the civil war and the besides propaganda strategy and leadership they had physical geography the white stock scene was for after this uh, after the world war ended and nicholas ii was assassinated However, don't go down that route. I've seen quite a lot of students get simply misled. misled. Um, it's only 10 marks. Don't go crazy and, you know, completely blow your hats off. It's, no, no, just talk about these two factors. Don't go overboard. Just focus on these two factors and talk about nothing else and you can get those 10 marks. It's like, there's what you need to talk about. Do that. It's fine. They ask you to do it on these very factors. That's all you need to talk about. So yeah, don't go down the route of starting talking about, I don't know, like I said, physical geography, because you'll get no marks, because it wants these two reasons. You're not answering the question. Always answer the question at a level. Trust me, you can do so many marks. Get like zero on the paper just by not answering the question. So, stress and leadership and propaganda. So how did uh, propaganda uh, cause Bolsheviks' victory ultimately in the Russian Civil War? Well, if you look at propaganda, got a new highlight, a uh, new whiteboard pen. Uh, propaganda. So propaganda, you can talk about Agintrop, which was the Bolshevik form of um, propaganda throughout the reign. I think there's an N in there somewhere. Agintrop, that was the form of uh, propaganda they used to rally around uh, mass support. Mass support. That was for mass support during the um, Russian Civil War. So well, as in the form of propaganda, and that was a form of mass support. The Bolsheviks were simply trying to rally around a lot of support during the Civil War, which they'd done very, very well. Why? 
because they managed to have this as a kind of control of the urban areas. So because they had control of those urban areas, they could spread propaganda through places such as St. Petersburg and Moscow much more easily to the workers because they had high amount of population. So they could reach that propaganda and give it quickly into why they could uh, win the civil war because they had support of the people. And of course, when you talk about Bolshevik propaganda, there's one phrase no one can ever forget said by Vladimir Lenin himself, and that is peace, bread, land. I mean, you can quite frankly write your entire paragraph on propaganda just on peace, bread, land, really. You know, Vladimir Lenin, the propaganda, he's promising peace, a withdrawal from the First World War, defeat of the White Army, there will be peace and stability in this new communist state, bread. Everyone will have an equal amount of food to eat and there will be no one starving, peasants or workers alike, stealing it from the rich, and land, land we transfer from the rich landowners and those pesky whites who've been fighting against to the um, workers. Again, that's pesky, I mean, from the white perspective. This is politically neutral, this is not a politics lesson, this is um, uh, history. So yeah, but that's from Lenin, Len Len of course, called them pesky whites with the other Bolshevik communist. So yeah, those are some reasons why not propaganda, adding drop, mass support, urban areas, support increases, and peace bred land are all for the propaganda the Bolsheviks used to achieve victory. So let's rub that out and we focus on strategy and leadership. I don't want this video to be too long. So what can we talk about in strategy and leadership in how the Bolsheviks won the Civil War? Well, strategy and leadership, they had Leon Trotsky for a start. Leon Trotsky, Minister of War. Lead um, four to one. They outnumbered the White Army at their peak, four to one in the Russian Civil War. Uh, defeated Kolchak, Alexander Kolchak, who was um, he was the most popular. He was the supreme ruler of Russia for the White Army, and the using leadership, the Reds under you know Commander Leon Trotsky defeated him, and he was uh, killed in the Civil War. So they lacked a. Uh, big leader, and uh, they were better coordinated, so coordination, discipline, deserters were of course shot, so yeah, Leon Trotsky, they outnumbered them 4-1, to one. Alexander Kolchak was defeated, coordination was better, they had a better army matter discipline, and strategy. Because, why? Well, they employed ex-Tsarist officers. Ex-Tsarist officers were under the command of the Reds. So yeah, those are basically, you can, again, quite easy, only 10 marks, and quite easy. Right apart of those reasons, you've got Leon Trotsky, leader, very strong leader, out number 4 to 1, defeat of Kolchak, coordination, discipline, and the strategy of informing and employing ex-Tsarist officers to work for the Reds meant that they were far more better coordinated compared to the whites. The whites were far less organised, lacked a common goal, uh, were uh, poorly disciplined and were vastly spread out compared to the Reds, which very much knew what they were doing throughout the Civil War. So I'll just show you my exam question I wrote now on the on Russian Civil War. And my AI gave this 9 out of 10 marks. I think that's quite generous. I don't know if this is worth 9 out of 10, but my AI says this is a 9 out of 10 answer. So I'll show you it. So, the Bolsheviks ultimately saw victory in the Russian Civil War because of the great strategy and military leadership, especially compared to the whites, which were not well coordinated or leaded. Main line of argument, good introduction. For instance, many Red Army officers were employed from former Tsarist and First World War positions, so could be effective in leading an army into battle because they had training and experience. Furthermore, the Red Army was under the command of Leon Trotsky, who was harsh military discipline and leadership. This was demonstrated when he shot deserters and to restore order and discipline, and his swift victories against leaders like Alexander Kolchak proved that Bolshevik had a supreme leader uh, leadership compared to the whites, who had a common goal, were disorganised and poorly disciplined. In wartime, this would only prove pivotal in why the Bolsheviks ultimately achieved victory. Good old knowledge, key points, signposting, developing, and analysis. Now, however, the, as the aspect of Bolshevik using propaganda as a tool to achieve victory in the Civil War is still a valid reason and should be taken into account in why they won the Civil War. 
The form the Bolshevik propaganda was called Adinjarov. It was a very effective as it was criminalising the whites, trying to maintain the old Tsarist autocracy ways and always mocked the prisoner government in continuing the First World War involvement. In turn, this boosted Bolshevik support and recruitment in the Civil War as many leftists wanted to give CNN to the old Tsarist regime, which had discriminated against workers and uh, peasants for years. So the Bolshevik slogan to boost propaganda, peace bread land, appealed to many people, however, it should be considered the whites or these propaganda and men, many workers particularly cho chose to fight for the Bolsheviks regardless of it. So in time, propaganda only accelerated the fact that Bolsheviks were winning the Civil War, were winning the Civil War, not so responsible for it. So although I have very well developed the idea of propaganda, I do still come back to my line of argument. However, regardless, you know, those key words, I'm still making my line of argument clear. I think strategy leads you to reason. And then finally, to conclude, strategy conclusion, in conclusion, strategy and leadership are the biggest impact of Bolshevik victory in the Russian Civil War, as it has demonstrated good leadership and discipline for Trotsky, increased Bolshevik support, and using exile officers ultimately meant the Reds were well organized, coordinated, and under good command, which would achieve their victory. Compared to a propaganda which was just a catalyst for victory, not the only reason it occurred. So there you are gone. Everyone, there is my exam question. Again, if we turn back to the book itself on page 56, I'll leave a link to this book down in the description. I'll put it up on screen now where you can find it. Uh, but yeah, this has a whole page on strategy and leadership and come to the exam question. Well, exam questions here in, um, uh, after you've learned what you want to learn. But yeah, like I said here, it talks all about, yeah, things the leadership and yeah, strategy and tactics and how the Bolsheviks won. But did you know, the other main tactics employed by the Bolsheviks was the opposition of Czechia. Brutally, the Czechia were, of course, the secret police of Bolsheviks also used to um, track down on um, ex, uh, sorry, anti-Bolshevik um, supporters like the White Army. And, of course, that instilled fear in the people that they wanted to support the Bolsheviks and they want, they would win because they were uh, fearful of uh, going against them. They knew this new communist order would be implemented within Russia and, of course, Vladimir Lenin until 1924 rule over Russia and the chief ultimate Civil War victory, and of course the White struggle to cooperate and to coordinate that activity. This was partly due to geographical separation, but also as a result of not having a common set of aims. The Whites were made up of, you know, Ukrainians, Cossacks, Finns. They had no central aim, especially when Zarkly II was killed. Um, you know, met someone hit independence, some would form their own little green and black armies, and some just wanted to see um, a new restoration of an old Tsarist regime or the original government to still being in charge or just generally did not like being under Russian control anymore. So, there's a lot you can talk about here. So, thank you for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next YouTube video. Goodbye.